I knew I was different since I was three years old. I like to dress up. I was interested in makeup. And I loved to play in my mother's beauty salon. My name is Mogo Papa, and I'm a fashion designer. Some might even say I'm quite successful. Perhaps there is no Huarai or other meeting for me. A girl who grew up in provincial town in Myanmar, who was actually a boy when she was born. I know some of you are wondering and let's talk about that question on your mind. I'm gay. I'm transgender. Is it difficult for people like me? Well, perhaps at the beginning, it was a good thing that, that I knew I was different. Some people don't know. Some people don't know or are in denial. That's even harder. I also being aware of the in fact that my de being different brought shame to my family. And I so wanted them to have a sense of pride because of me. School was not that easy. I got teased a lot by other boys, bully even. I was crying a lot of times. To add to that, you know how the education systems like here Children are not allowed to decide what they actually wanted to do. When I was in high school, because of my marks, I was automatically put into study science, sciences, biology, physics, chemistry. I knew I had no interest in any of it. My family wanted me to get a university degree and go into the traditional mogul professions of jam trading, but I was not interested in that either. The blessing in disguise came in the form of riots that caused school to be closed across the country. I dropped out. And at the age of 17, I left home. That was a turning point for me. I have always held the belief that if you can make your living out of what you are passionate about, life will be a lot more fulfilling. In fact, I knew I did not want to compromise my passion. Give me a clear idea of what I wanted to do in life. I also knew that in life, you have to try hard. I learned English, I learned to be makeup artist, and I loved what I did. I was a miserable school child. But I felt there was no hope. After finding my passion and interest, I became active, energetic, and confident. The change was profound. Of course, being who I am, 
I cannot do what I want. I have to be restrained on the bus in the front. I cannot just go out to the restaurant with my boyfriend. I cannot dress how I want. But that's fine. I understand. In certain places, I will be loved or not accepted. So I simply avoid those places. In certain event, I have to dress in certain way, so I do. It is about controlling my lifestyle so that I do not provoke a reaction from others that could be hurtful. Another turning point for me was Milan. I always wanted to study abroad, and the chance came when I was 30. I had an acquaintance who was kind enough to research fashion studies programs for me. I didn't even know how to use a computer, but I taught myself so I can go online and look at courses. I chose to go to Milan. In Milan, my eyes opened to the war of wood culture. We didn't have anything like that in Myanmar. When I came back, I instinctively understood that Myanmar wood culture have to be our traditional textiles, especially a chip. It coincided with a time a friend gave me a book on vintage chain patterns. It sparked my creativity. Back then, a chain popularity has fallen. Bryce still wore it, of course. But mostly, older women wore it to attend the weddings. Younger women were attracted to other types of fabrics. On the weaving side as well, there was an injustice going on. Weavers only earn 10,000 chet per piece after spending hours of hand weaving these garments. When retail 300,000 chet on average, not only was it not fair, it was making the weavers offer easier patterns. When I came up with my design, I encouraged the weaver by paying them more. So, they would spend time weaving the more intricate patterns. Now, whole villages, even men, are involved in weaving, hand weaving, because it provides a good livelihood NHC has been revitalized with both old and young women loving it and wearing it. Not only that, the whole Myanmar traditional textile industry is thriving. And that is very encouraged to see. I wanted to preserve tradition, but I understood that preserving tradition also means to modernize it and bring it into our times. I got criticized a lot. Some people said that the gays are ruining tradition. This was a time when Myanmar was still quite close in many ways. When I first returned in 2006, there was not much to do in Mandalay, where I was living at that time. I understood that if I wanted to pursue fashion, I needed to move to Yango. I had already been doing fashion shows since 1996 in Mandalay. 
So I started organize, organizing fashion show of my design. I was naive and didn't know about the rules or that they are sometimes arbitrary. One time, the authority said that I had organized a fashion show without a, the required permits. That was a, just a small show with 200 attendees, but they threw me in prison for a month. That was a hard lesson. My journey has not been easy, but I can say it was especially difficult either. It is life. The biggest lesson I have learned that I can pass on to you is that you have to find a place that is fitting for you, a place when you, where you can make your passion also your profession. And that you have to have faith in your, in your life and keep pursuing your dream. My desire to educate myself and pursue my passions took me from Mogo to Mandalay and to Myanmar. Perhaps one day it will take me to the wall. Thank you. <laughs>